Hello everyone, this is Vertic Designs here, and for this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to take a look at the new 2019 feature, which is the frame tool. We're going to learn how to use it and how to convert any shapes and just about any selections into a custom frame. This can be used to insert pictures and it just saves a lot of time from moving things around. You can just easily drag and drop a picture and just scale it to whatever size you prefer. We're pretty much going to talk about the frame tool in more detail. Okay, so before we actually get started, I would recommend you all download a few different images or have a folder with some images that you can use for an example. It just makes it easier because you can drag and drop them into your frames. Another great thing about Photoshop is you can also open up a libraries tab. So if you don't already have it open, you go to window and go down to libraries and this will pretty much allow you to open up your folder and have all your images right here. So then you could just drag and drop them into your frame. However, for me, I can't exactly use this feature because my images are a little bit larger and they are not supported. Let's get ourselves the first image, which is this image right here. A simple cabin and let's say we wanted a photo frame up, but we didn't exactly want to always have to mess about with the scale of an image or have to move it around, move it where we wanted to. We can always fix the position of where the frame will be. To get to the frame tool, it's really simple. You can either press K on your keyboard and that will open it up for you, or you can pretty much go down to the frame tool, which is right here. By default, you will have two different types. You'll have a square and a circle. To use the tool, all you gotta do is left click and drag the left side of the mouse outwards, and this will give you a custom width and custom height. So if you wanted to, you can have it really wide or you can have it really tall. But if you wanted to have it as a square and keep the aspect ratio, you would hold shift and this will lock the aspect ratio. So it's a square exactly. Both sides are equal. Now that you've got yourself a nice little shape, you can go to the first tool and you can move it wherever you like on this image. Another great thing about the frame tool is you can press control A to select all your image. And you can pretty much align this frame so you can center it by going on the first tool and using the alignment tools right here. Now that it's nice and center, we're gonna press Control D to deselect the selection. And we are also going to hold Shift to keep it center and then move it slightly up. Now that we're ready, we can drag and drop this image. You can either drag and drop it in here into the frame itself, or you can drop it into the layer. I prefer to drop it in the frame and it goes straight there. We can press Control T to resize it. Pretty much scale it down to whatever you would prefer or where you would like the image. You can use the arrow keys to move it left and right or up and down. So as you can see, we have our frame tool right here. This is the frame itself and this is the actual layer. As you can see, when we select the frame, it selects the frame itself. So we can still rescale it if we wanted to. If we press Control and Z to undo. If you wanted to, you can make it bigger or you can customize it to whatever you would prefer. You can also hold control and this will make it so it crops the frame. Once your picture is in the frame, you can pretty much use it as you would normally do with, let's say you wanted to go to blending options, they are right here. Just make sure you switch between these as if you are switching between a mask. It is the same as that. So you can switch from this one to this one and once this one is selected, the actual layer, you can right click on it and go to blending options. And you can pretty much give it any effects that you want to. Now, keep in mind, if you do give it a stroke, it will apply it to the outer border. So the actual image itself, and you won't be able to see it. If you want to, you can go over and get yourself a color overlay, change it to whatever color you would like. Let's go with like a nice orange color and just click on the first one for the blending mode and then once it's selected you can scroll through and see what you prefer. Or if you don't want to do this you can get yourself a gradient instead and do it that way. Let's get ourselves a blue 
and a purple. Press OK. And once again, you can flick through the effects and have a look, see which one you prefer. You can even apply a adjustment if you wanted to. Let's say we want to give it a brightness and contrast. You'd get yourself the brightness and contrast. Let's apply a bit of brightness and then a bit of contrast. Now, keep in mind when you do apply it, it will apply it to all of your layers. So to only apply it to the actual frame, you hold Alt and then this icon will pop up if you are in between the two layers and this will only apply it to your frame. So as you can see, it's only applied it to the image. We can even get ourselves a saturation, increase the saturation a little bit. So let's say you don't want this image. You can just click on it and press delete and now it's gone. The frame will stay there. Now, if you have both of them selected at the same time, it will delete both of them. Or if you just click on this, it will select them both and that will delete them both. Now, just remember, you have to click on the thumbnail to delete whichever one you want. So let's say we delete this one or we can even delete the frame. But normally when you delete the frame, it deletes the whole image too. So let's actually replace this image. Let's get another one and drag it on top of that one. And as you can see, it is now being replaced. There's a different image, control T. And yeah, it is that simple. Another thing about the blending options is if you wanted to, you can create yourself a group. So if you hold shift, click on the top one and create yourself a folder, then you want to press control J. You want to hide the one underneath so you can have it as a backup. Convert this one into a smart object, and then if you right click on it, go to blending options, you can now start to apply some things that you couldn't do before. So for example, you can get yourself a bevel and emboss. This will make it look like a picture frame. It just gives it that nice little bit of detail. You can change the size if you wanted to. You can change the type in here. We're gonna use this one right here. You can also give it, let's say, drop shadow and set this one to 126 direction. And there we go, it kind of looks like more of a picture frame now. You can even apply a gradient overlay if you wanted to and pretty much set it to this one, move this one over to here, press OK, and then set it to 17 opacity. This just gives it a bit of a gradient effect to make it look more like a picture. Okay, so let's say we've got ourselves a different type of image. For example, this oval shape right here. This is a different type of frame, but you can still use the frame tool, which is right here, and get yourself the round one, and just pretty much scale it to what you believe is the best size. Now, if you get it wrong, don't worry about it. You can scale it to whatever you prefer. You can hold Alt and use scroll wheel to go up to zoom into your image. Now, if you're struggling to see the actual frame itself, you can create yourself a nice little solid, get yourself, let's say a black, for example, and then just turn down the opacity. Makes it a little bit easier for you to see the frame. So we're gonna adjust it so it fits nicely. I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt, zoom back out. I'm also going to hide the layer between it get the image, drag it into the frame. So if we're gonna resize this, we have our image right here. Let's say we've got a CV template and we wanna save ourselves some time from having to replace the image, rescaling it and then cropping it out. You can easily do this by having frames. So as you can see, I've got a frame right here. I've got one for references and one for the profile picture. I'm gonna start off with the profile picture. So I'm gonna go over to the frame, which is right here. This is what I created. And I'm gonna get a picture of myself for my CV. So I'm gonna left click and drag it into the frame and it is a lot bigger than it needs to be. So we're gonna press control T to resize it. Now, sometimes with the images, let's say you get this image and it does this where the aspect ratio goes off. You just pretty much hold shift and it locks it. So the aspect ratio is normal. And just pretty much resize it, put it to a nice scale, for example, around like so. And that is not looking too bad. If we click off it to see what it looks like, that is pretty good. We've got a profile picture. Let's add the education. So 
we're going to get ourselves the education folder, which is right here, and there is the frame. Once again, click and drag this into the frame and press Ctrl T to resize it. Make sure you are selecting the actual image itself. And then once again, you're going to have to hold shift to keep the aspect ratio. If you wanted to, you can zoom in by holding Alt and using the scroll wheel to go up. And just make it so it's nice and perfect size for it. So that is pretty good right there. So if you click off it, that is really good. We've got the education. Let's add ourselves some references. In the references, I have two folders right here. So start off with the first one. Let's get ourselves the first reference. Click and drop it into here. If you have a large image, it may take a little bit longer to import. So as you can see, if we scale this, it is a lot bigger than the actual template itself. You pretty much want to scale it to the size you prefer. So that is looking quite good. And the second one, this one is also a large image, so it'll take a little bit longer. Press Control T. And there we go. So as you can see, it just makes life a lot easier if we have this tool because we can easily drag and drop images into templates and just pretty much save yourself a lot of time. This can be really helpful if you have like really strict deadlines. It just saves a lot of time and it's a lot easier. And this is looking pretty good. Not only that, you can always go back to it and if you wanted to, you can always replace an image or you can always delete it, do whatever you would like with it. If you wanted to, you can also apply it to text. So if you get yourself the text tool, get yourself a black color, left click on the screen and type in your text. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So let's go with 75, drag the corners back in, press Control A, center the text, press Control D. With text, there are two ways that you can actually make this into a frame. You can either go to type and then go down to create work path. This will pretty much create you all the points and then right click on it and then go to convert to frame. You then give it a name, press OK, and now you've got yourself a frame. The other way to do this is to convert this into a shape. So if you go to type again and then convert to shape, it will turn this into a shape and then you right click on it and then convert to frame. Same again, give it a name and then there you go, you have your text. Get yourself a texture or any type of picture and drag it in like so. And then scale it down to whatever size you prefer. Now with this image, as you can see, you can't shift key it. So you have to just drag the corners. Now, if you want to add some other effects, you will have to turn this into a smart object and then you can apply blending options. So for example, a stroke. Okay, so we've pretty much gone over the basics. Now, let's say you've got an image like this where it's a little bit more advanced. And let's say we wanted to replace the image inside the glasses. To do this, we can use a tool which is right here and that is the curvature pen tool. So if you right click on it and go to the curvature pen tool. The curvature pen tool works like this. It's a little bit like the pen tool, but every point that you create, it will curve the points. Okay, so let's create the first point. Now for the first point, this one will always be straight because afterwards is when it can calculate how exactly to curve the line. So if it's a big curve, it'll curve it a lot more. If it's a little curve, it'll only curve it a little bit. So as you can see, if we curve it a lot, it will change it depending on where we plot the point. So that is how the curvature pen tool works. Now, after the second point, that's when it gets a little bit more curvy and you can create your selections. Another thing about the pen tool is you can go back. So if you undo by pressing Control and Z to undo, you can always adjust your points if you wanted to. So let's say we created one here. You can right click on it and delete anchor point, or you can add yourself a anchor point and then edit it from here. Now, as you can see, they all move once you edit one of them. 
To stop this from happening, all you gotta do is hold Alt and then click on this one and then it will only apply it to this one right here. Otherwise, it will just apply it to all of them like so. And this can be quite annoying because if you, let's say, want to create another selection, it will throw the other ones off. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, you want to zoom into the image so it's a little bit easier for you to see. You just hold Alt and scroll up. You can keep the background as it is. We don't really need to edit that. But what we need to do is we need to first of all create the first point. So if you left click, create yourself another one and then start to curve this line. You don't even have to press any buttons, it'll curve it for you. All you have to do is just plot them at a reasonable position. Now, they won't be perfect, so if some of them aren't exactly what you wanted to, you can always adjust them by moving them, like so. And let's say we want to move this one a little bit more that way to about here. We can also get another point there. And that is the great thing about the Curvature Pen tool. You can always edit it live as it is. So that is looking not too bad. You can hop over to the second one and once again do the same as last time. And don't worry about this one, you still have this selection there. Now that you've got yourself the selection, all you got to do is go over to the top where it says selection, mask and shape. You want to click on shape and you want to make sure you are still selecting the curvature pen tool. Once you've got this selected, you've got your shape right here. And then all you got to do is right click on it and go to convert to frame. Call it glasses, press OK and there we go. You've got yourself a nice custom frame right here. Now all you got to do is get the other image and just drag it in to the frame and there we go. You can easily turn it off and on. You can turn down the opacity if you wanted to. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought of the video. I'll be making more in the future so if you're new to the channel click on the subscribe button and yeah, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.